Welcome to an HR Technology Channel interview on Total Picture Radio. Today, my guest is the founder and CEO of HR Marketer Software, Mark Williman. Uh, if you work in HR and or talent acquisition, especially in marketing, sales, or the advertising role, I'm sure you're familiar with HR Marketer and probably use the software. For the uh, 10 years I've been covering this industry and doing this show, HR Marketer has been the place to keep track of conferences, events, speaking opportunities, research, and used for news distribution. And over the past several years, Mark and his team of developers have continuously improved the product, especially a a discovery tool across social media platforms that's called HR Marketer Insights. And and this is where we're going to be spending most of our time today with Mark. So Mark, thanks so much for speaking with me today on Total Picture. Oh, it's my pleasure, Peter. Thanks for having me. I want to start off by having you tell us a little bit about what's been going on with your organization, because you recently sold the uh, Fisher Vista Marketing and uh, PR Agency, which was a part of your whole tool sets. Oh, sure. Well, back in 2000, when I started uh, Fisher Vista and the software HR Marketer, it made a lot of sense to have the agency as well as the software. Uh, People would buy the software and have additional needs, whether it was writing a press release or um, putting together some content, and the agency began. But 15 years in, when they both became fairly sizable businesses, it made no sense to to continue to have them under one roof. So they separated, effective uh, Jan 1 of this year, and operated as two completely different um, organizations. And two of uh, the partners that were in the agency uh, bought into it and now run it day to day. Um, but I think as, as two separate organizations, as many of your listeners can probably appreciate, they can do better um, on their own than, than together. So they're separate. Let's get uh, caught up on the core tool, which is HR Marketer. Well, HR Marketer was always about aggregating information to help marketing and PR professionals in the HR space do their jobs better. And that included uh, going out and gathering speaking opportunities for what were about a thousand events in the HR space. And yes, there are that many conferences in, in our in our industry. Yeah, it's really unbelievable. Yeah. When you go and, onto your website and you look at all of these. And, and, and yeah, it's I mean, the local, the regional, the nationals, the globals. But we, 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 we got all the information. We are tracking all of the journalists. And that would include the beat writers for major national dailies right down to individual HR trade magazines. And we were aggregating uh, all of their social information. So if they had a Twitter ID, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, we had that. Uh, we were tracking all the bloggers, the influencers, the analysts, and and those are the research databases. And for years, uh, they they provided value to individuals. What we've done the last two years, Peter, is we decided, hey, what would happen if we started scraping all of the conversations, of course, that are publicly available on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, by all these individuals in the space, so that we were tracking the publications and the blogs or the articles that they were putting out, the news stories, everything that people on Twitter were tweeting about, that's insight. And it basically scrapes the conversation day to day in our space. So you can see what the most popular uh, articles by topic are, who's engaging with those articles, who's sharing them. The interesting thing, Peter, that we also did is we took a look at all of those 1,000 events or so that we were tracking almost all today have a hashtag. So we're now looking at all of the conversations taking place around the events with those hashtags. And we've amassed a database of over 4 million individuals that have used a hashtag that relates to HR. And that allows our customers, of course, to do some pretty good um, intelligence seeking going in to find out who's engaging with what events and what what the topics are being discussed at those events. But that really is what brought the static databases uh, to more of an interactive um, uh, product today with HR Marketer Insight. We've combined the the the, the social aspect with the traditional you know aggregation of of the information. So it's working out fun. It's good. It's it's good stuff. And I can't wait for um, our listeners and our viewers to uh, see a demo of some of what Mark is talking about here. 
Um, and so therefore, if you are listening to this as a podcast, I really encourage you to, um, to take a look at it. And that way you'll get to see uh, real time exactly how this, this Insights product works. But before we go there, Mark, um, you're probably the best person I know to tell us what's trending this year in HR and what's new or perhaps what is, is changed from what was uh, maybe three or four months ago being trending in, H- in the HR space. <laughs> You're going to put me on the spot, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the things that we, we discovered, Peter, when we started doing these analyses is, um, and, and our developers kind of gave me an education on this is, hey, Mark, there's a difference between what's trending and what's popular. Um, and statistically, they explained why that is. And, and it's interesting because in our space, what's popular doesn't change all that much month to month. And in some cases, even year to year, big data continues to be a very popular topic. Right. Um, the Affordable Care Act continues to be a popular topic. Employee engagement is always popular. Now, the people talking about those and the context of those discussions and the content that's that's being shared on those topics, that changes, but those topics are kind of just always there in, in our space. What's trending really is oftentimes determined by a major event. Uh, I'll give you an example. A few years back, I think it was a few years back now, it's the first example that comes to my mind. When I think uh, the Yahoo CEO, Marissa Meyer, got rid of the telecommuting, do you mm-hmm. remember that? Yep. That was a huge story. Right. And of course, in the HR space, everybody was talking about flexible work arrangements and telecommuting. So that's an example of something that was trending at that time. Uh, then it goes away. And then every time Veterans Day comes around, there's a lot of trending topics about hiring veterans and, and workplace issues or that relate to you know uh, veterans returning from the war and entering the workforce. So what's trending really does change month to month. As far as what's uh, trending right now, I'd actually have to bring up the software to check. And we see, uh, as an example, um, uh, workplace culture. I don't know why, but in the software, we could click through to find out why is that why is that topic trending uh, the war for talent is always um, up but that's up particularly high the last uh, couple of weeks recruitment marketing uh, talent acquisition uh, generation X is in the news but that's the joy of the product as you can see you know day to day week to week what's trending and you can segment it by the sector of HR that you're interested in so if you're into testing and assessments, what's trending there is different than if you're into comp and benefits. Right. So you can actually break it down uh, in silos and see what's trending. But more importantly, Peter, why that's, why that's important. And for marketers, what we found is that when you produce content or talk on social about topics that are trending, you get much more views, you get much more interest in your content or your conversation. So as a marketer, as a content marketer today on social, it's really important to be in the right conversations. And as a blogger, you want to be tailoring your content to actually what's popular now because it results in more views. So that's kind of how it all all comes together and what we try to build the software to do. You are in contact with, I know, and speak with many HR leaders. Uh, what's What are their pain points today? What are they really grappling with? Well, we, on the marketing side, mm-hmm. it, it, I assume that's what you're asking, because most of my conversations are going to be around marketing, uh, whether we're talking to small company CEOs or, or, or larger companies. And, you know, really, Peter, it's about it's about brand visibility, brand awareness. How do we in a very crowded marketplace, get, get, get noticed. We're all on LinkedIn. And every time I go on to LinkedIn, you know, you have your notifications tab mm-hmm. and you look at it and a hundred people in your network published a post today. Right? I know a, it's, it's remarkable. Isn't it? <laughs> there's a yeah. lot of, there's a, I mean, before they used to control that. So people like you had special rights to publish content. Uh-huh. Now guys like me can publish content. And, you know, I think we're just cluttering up the whole, the whole space. Not everybody can write, but seriously, that that's, that's the challenge today for marketers is how do you, how do you tell the story in such a way that's non-promotional, but yet it's going to get the attention and the interest of the HR community. And it's very difficult. We all, we're all blogging. We're all on Twitter. I think we should be. We're all on LinkedIn. We're commenting on each other's comment content. We're doing webinars. We're going to trade shows. We're speaking. But, but how do we 
how do we get noticed? And I think that's that's a big challenge. And the other challenge is really with social. It's what do I do on social? You know, we still have companies that aren't quite sure they should be investing in social, some that are investing heavily in social, trying to measure the ROI. That's a lot of the um, you know, conversation I'm, I'm having is is around those topics. Right. And then you have companies who are like in the defense industry or in pharmaceutical or financial services who are like, oh, you know, we we can't be on social because of exactly. all the legal stuff. How do you advise organizations that have so many like federal restrictions and regulations that they have to adhere to get out and be on the blogosphere and have a social presence? Yeah, and, and, and that's a great question. I used I used to work in the pharmaceutical industry, so I totally appreciate um, the issues and, and the challenges that marketing departments face as far as what they can be doing publicly without having all sorts of um, lawyers review and, and, and okay. So I, I have no idea, um, you know, it, how you set up processes so that you can be on social. But I'm pretty confident that everybody can be on social and every brand can be on social. It's just a matter of figuring out what works for your organization, what works for your culture. Uh, there's no reason why companies can't have a strong social presence and engage with their with their stakeholders, you know, customers, their prospects, uh, the media, um, you know, and, and w- without much risk. There, there ought to be a way to do that. I'm, I'm pretty confident. In our space, I'm convinced of it. In other industries, I'm, you know, it can be done. It's just because you see people doing it. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, taking that first step into it and figuring out what's going to work for your culture and, you know, your organization. All right, so I want to uh, now shift into demo mode because I'm very anxious okay. to uh, show uh, our viewers some of the really cool things that you can do with HR Marketer. Yeah, so I am, I'm on the main dashboard right now. So basically what I want to do, Mark, is, is kind of just go through step-by-step step and talk about the various frames that exist on the dashboard, uh, starting with with my topics. Now, uh, my topics is, is very interesting because so much of what you're doing here can be customized to exactly what your piece of the industry is or what your interests are. So I have uh, up on my dashboard, big data, but I also have set up a conference or event, uh, executive search, leadership and talent acquisition. And I can click through on each one of these different pieces and see what the top five articles for this week are. So, uh, Mark, can you kind of dive into this a little bit and give us the background of uh, my topics and and how uh, a lot of marketers are using this? Sure. So the, the first thing when you onboard the software is you pick some topics. You can pick as many as you want. We recommend something manageable, uh, half a dozen or so. And what I tell customers is imagine your customers are searching on a topic or topics. Um, what would those topics be that you'd want your brand associated with? So if you're in a background screening industry, background screening is a logical topic. Um, whatever those topics are, you put them into the system. And each day when you log on, we can show you in the HR community what is the most widely shared content on those topics. Mm-hmm. Um, other thing, and that, Now, how you can do that? Well, if you're looking to, to share a lot of articles yourself each day, well, then you can expand the search to include more than five. But this is this is a great way to find content that your peers in the industry are sharing and talking about and share it. So it's a great way to tee up content to share. It's also a great way to find content to comment on. Right. Commenting on blogs and articles is a great visibility strategy. We just make it easy to find that. As you see on your dashboard, you can also notice who is engaging with this topic. Now it's real people. And you can expand that search to see the dozens or hundreds, whatever it may be, of people that are actually engaging with that topic. In other words, they're either publishing content or sharing content or commenting, etc. And it's a great way to find people to follow or include in your network or uh, engage with to get visibility with them. Um, Going down your dashboard, you're going to see related topics. Bloggers and SEO pros love this because what this is saying is, look, we've just analyzed all of the content that includes your topic these are the topics or related topics that we often find as well in this content. 
So it's kind of like the long tail topics, which is a great way to um, you know, work those topics into your own content. Then you have the related hashtags. And it's very simple. We've looked at all the shares that point to content that include your topic. And we look at the hashtags that were used when pointing to that content. So it's a great way to get turned on to new hashtags to use and whether whether those hashtags were being used on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, and the bulk are still on Twitter, um, we'll have a listing of the most frequently used um, hashtags for those topics. And lastly, which is my favorite feature, is related posts, we call it. And that's a way to get a near real-time view of all the content being shared or conversations relating to your topic on LinkedIn, on Facebook, where publicly available, as well as on um, Twitter, and the ability for you to go right into those channels and then start engaging. So if I want to go find five um, Facebook conversations to quickly like that relate to my topic, I can do it in probably 15 seconds using the software. So that's the My Topics area of the, of the, and that's one of many modules, but it's an important module. Right. All right. Well, let's talk about the what popular, What's Popular module, which is something you were talking about a little bit earlier, because again, uh, you can go in and search on all HR topics or uh, compensation, employment and labor law, go through and, and, and kind of give us an update on what this is doing. What's popular is very simply the, we, we look at the entire HR space and all the content being produced and shared on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can go back six months to a year, or you can just look at today. And we just tell you what topics are popular. And that's really no different than just looking at how often the phrase is showing up in the data, uh, which is different than trending. Uh, we, we have a, an all-inclusive tag cloud where you can see across the whole industry what's popular, or you can break it down into areas like recruiting and staffing, employment and labor law, comp and benefits, and other verticals. So you can see specifically in an area of HR that's important to you what's popular. And then from there, you have a choice to click through the view all the articles that are being shared that relate to that topic or all the people engaging with that topic. And of course, they, they, they both allow you to do different things. But that's the what's popular section. I think what's very interesting about the, in, in, in this module as well is um, you can select uh, who you want to see, for instance, analysts, consultants, speaker, media outlets. So again, uh, you can really uh, narrow down and engage with exactly the audience that you're looking for. That's right. And Peter, actually, I'm, I'm, what's interesting about that is that's what you get when you still combine real live people and researchers who understand the space with the technology. And I think that's, that's what one of the areas of HR marketer I'm proud about is we've never got rid of our researchers that are going out there and deciding what events to, to include in the database, what journalists to include, and also being able to label them so that we know who a traditional analyst is from Gartner, from Forrester, or, or a, you know, a, a blogger or a media outlet or journalist so that we can actually, um, I think with pretty high accuracy, give you the ability to say, look, I just want to look at the content that the analysts are showing. You can't do that without actually having uh, real live people. So it's a good mixture of technology and, and good old human capital. You have a module that's trending on Twitter. You have another module, top five articles. Yeah, well, the Twitter, the, the ha trending on Twitter is actually quite interesting because here we look at the whole fire hose of Twitter. Okay. And well, specifically, we're looking at who the HR community is mentioning most. Okay. And that's what's interesting is you, you, you can see somebody has nothing to do with, with, with HR, Kobe Bryant, and is making something up. But if they've done something or, or have written something or whatever it is that relate to HR or that engages HR, so that the HR community starts to share them, that's what that module shows. And you always get some, some pretty interesting information there. The top five articles is very simply just of all the content being shared in the HR marketplace day to day, what are the top articles that are being shared? Now, oftentimes, these articles are also being shared and liked and discussed throughout the globe or throughout the country by, by all people, out, not just HR. But again, we're just looking at the HR community. So let's talk about uh, what can I blog about? Because obviously, um, that's something I'm very interested in because I, I'm interested in knowing what's trending out there so I can plan who I interview and the topics that I discuss here on Total Picture. Yeah. So what can I blog about is, is really a different way of, of, of answering the question, what's trending? 
and I think it was David Meerman Scott who who coined the, the the term newsjacking. And what that means is, as a marketer, if you tailor your content to something that's that's trending right now on Twitter or anywhere, uh, you're more likely to get uh, additional reads. It's a difference between getting a few hundred reads and a few thousand reads of your top of your content. So what we do is we go in and we say each day what's trending, and then we turn it into what can I blog about. One of the very interesting modules is called Brand Comparison Relationships. And here uh, I'm looking at Total Picture and who's newly engaged with Total Picture Radio. Well, there's a lot of ways you can use it. There's there's a number of reports you can run on, on, on brand analysis. For your own brand, of course, to see not only in the whole fire hose, everybody that's newly engaging with your brand that wasn't engaging with you before. That doesn't mean following you. That means actually engaging with you, mentioning you, retweeting you, um, engaging with you. Um, you can find out just within the HR space uh, who the influencers are that are mentioning you in content or engaging with you on social. Uh, it's not just looking at Twitter. So if somebody actually blogs about you, we'll, we'll, we'll pick that up and make the association to them. So you can you can find out um, you know, the people that might be tweeting about you, but don't mention you or your name in the tweet, but link to content that does mention you. So there's just some nice reports to kind of um, put a better picture on that for you. And network profile, looking at the people in your network, who they are. Um, you can find out, you know, of all the people that follow you, who has X word in their bio or where they're from. It just allows you to dig deep in, in, in the analysis. What gets really interesting is when you start comparing your brand, Total Picture, mm -hmm. to other brands. So if you have two competing companies that want to find out, look, who is engaging with them but not me, it gets very useful to find new people to go out and engage with and just really a competitive intelligence tool day to day to find out you know, what, what is my competition up to? What's their most popular content that they're writing? Who are the people engaging with them that are not engaging with my brand and answering questions like that? Questions that we, we it, 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 information we want to know, wasn't always easy to, 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 to know it, but it, we just give an efficient way to, to find that information so you can act accordingly. There's, there's a brand new feature available in uh, HR Marketer Insights that Mark alluded to a little while ago that I want him to demo for you because he showed me this last week and it really blew my mind. So pretend that... You are uh, going to go to um, Sherm Annual, and you really want to know who uh, is engaged with that conference because you want to start marketing to them. Sure. So we're, I mentioned that we're, we're tracking the hashtags for hundreds, actually about a thousand uh, conferences. Um, and that goes back now about a year and a half when we started doing this. So if it, it, it allows you to do a number of things. One of the things, I love to engage with conferences that I'm not even attending. So if I'm looking at my a database right now, I can see about a dozen or so events going on this week and next week in the HR space. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's very easy for me just to grab that hashtag, um, click through to it, and see a live report of all the people engaging with it, um, the content being shared about it, um, I can start to use that hashtag. So it's a quick way for me to you know, come into the office in the morning, open up the database, and tee up a half a dozen or so tweets using different hashtags. That gets me visibility and just promotes my thought leadership without even being there. But to your point, there's also a value in saying, okay, I'm getting ready to go to Sherm this year, annual. Let's take a look at everybody that used that hashtag, engaged with that hashtag last year say, a month before the show to a few weeks after. And when we do that on, on um, our database, we can run a report, and I can see that there were actually just about 11,000 unique people that engaged with SHRM14, which was their hashtag last year. And I can see uh, who all those people are. I can search their bios. I can download them to a CSV file. But I can, I can start to, to see, more importantly, who are the most mentioned people. And you can actually get in and you can actually see for, say, OC Tanner, when I click that, it brings up all of the source information so you can see everybody that was engaging with OC Tanner, see? Um, and then what I was going to do is go over to the 
here, and I want to do a couple things. I want to do reporter, which I'm just going to do live here, and search, and that's going to give me all of the reporters. And you can make this, see, we got 1,030, 1,380 results, and you can see, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to highlight reporter, and that you can export to CSV, all the reporters, right? And then I like to go in and you can search by, say, hashtags used. And let's just pick T-Chat. That's a good one. But you can see, you know, over 29,000 uh, people have engaged with that hashtag. And you can see the context of how, see? And then you can go in and, and do the, um, by Twitter account name. And I can just do HR marketer. And I can search. And again, this is going to show me all of the conferences that HR Marketer has engaged with, see? And then you can actually click a number to get the context of those tweets. Um, and then, lastly, we will do by mentioned account name. And I'm going to go Thomas Friedman because we mentioned, and sure enough, he was at SHRM mentioned almost 3,000 times, but look, he's also T-Chat, hashtags change. These are other events, and I can certainly, you know, click a number to actually get the context of everybody that, he, that mentioned Thomas Friedman. Tell us exactly how a Twitter card works and how you go about uh, marketing uh, using Twitter cards, using your database capabilities. Yeah, that it's probably another um, total picture uh, program. There's a lot to it, but it's it's not that complicated. But you got to find someone that knows they're doing. You create the little Twitter card, and what you'll notice is when you're on Twitter, occasionally you'll see a sponsored tweet. Right? Well, there are sponsored tweets that that you can actually take an individual tweet and sponsor. But there are other uh, Twitter cards that are like sponsored tweets that. The whole everything's done within the Twitter card, so you can actually, you know, you'll notice these when you click through. There's actually call to action, and you can actually request a report right within the tweet by by never leaving it. And then the person who ran the Twitter card campaign would then have a record of who, what Twitter ID actually requested the the report, just just like you know, form on your web page, except they never actually left Twitter. So it's very non, you know, it's 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 much more seamless way of, 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 of lead generation. And then you'll have the list of people, and because they, based on their Twitter settings, you'll know their name, um, oftentimes a phone number, because we enter that information when we set up a Twitter account. Um, and that's how it works. And we actually ran a Twitter card campaign after last year's HR Technology Conference. conference. And, and we had this report we were making available. And I was amazed at just how many people requested the report through our Twitter card campaign. It even got the attention of Twitter. We actually got a call from somebody at Twitter saying, wow, that's a, that's a great engagement. How'd you get that much engagement? And it's all about the list. And the engagement was based on a list we put together of people we knew um, would be interested in something like that, like that, using our own software to identify, you know, eight to 10,000 Twitter IDs that were interested in HR technology. Basically, what you can do with this thing is you find all of these thousands of people who are tweeting about Sherm Annual, for instance, mm -hmm. and you, you can download all of those people to a CSV or an Excel file, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you've done that, you can go through that whole list and decide who you want to target in one of these Twitter card campaigns. You, you can, yes, exactly. And then you can upload it to Twitter and, and as your list that you're going to target mm -hmm. and set your budget and make it live. So there's all sorts of um, interesting ways you can search. You can search four and a half million bios for, I don't know, Recruiter or SHRM or SPHR to find, you know, people that are accredited in, in engaging with these events. So there's no end. You can, you can definitely get lost in the, in the tool. I can't imagine anyone who is and an event organizer not wanting to really engage with this and start playing around with it and figuring out exactly how they can use it to their strategic advantage. And uh, from a standpoint of, of marketing to those folks who are 
uh, you know, tweeting about their particular event. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I hope you're right. We've been doing this now for about 15 years, and I've always viewed our role in the marketplace as the, as the aggregators of information. That's what we do really well. We go out and we get data, and then we package it in a way that we can help our customers, which is the HR marketplace, um, do their jobs more efficiently. And you know, this, this is just an evolution uh, in, that, in, in, in that process. Social now dominates um, you know, content delivery, uh, marketing, and it's just our way of, of, of finding out how to, how to help our customers do that. So thanks, Peter, for the opportunity here to showcase some of our technologies. And, by the way, if you use the link on Mark's show page in the HR Technology channel, of Total Picture, totalpicture.com, you'll get a uh, special offer from Mark um, if you sign up and start using his software. So again, thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. Uh, We look forward to seeing you next time.